If x is an integer, is x times the absolute value of x less than 2 to the x? Well, this is an interesting question here. So, statement number 1 tells us that x is negative. Well, let's think about this. If x is negative, we know that the absolute value of x is still going to be positive. And so if we do x times the absolute value of x, well, that's a positive number times a negative number, which is negative. So that's definitely going to be less than 0. Well, meanwhile, what happens when we raise 2 to the negative? So let's say 2 to the negative 3. Well, what that really means is 1 over 2 to the third. So 2 to the negative 3 is actually equal to 1 eighth. And in general, when you raise 2 to a negative, what you get are positive fractions smaller than 1. So we don't know what 2 to the x would be, but we can definitely say that 2 to the x would be greater than 0. It would, be, it would definitely be positive, although it would be a fraction smaller than 1. Well, if we know that x times absolute value of x is less than 0, and if 2 to the x is greater than 0, then by transitivity of inequality, we can see that x times absolute value of x has to be less than 2 to the x. So this statement by itself is completely sufficient to answer the question. Now let's put that aside, statement number two. Turns out statement number two is going to be kind of a reprise of our argument from the last time. Well, x is x equals negative 10. Well, absolute value of negative 10, of course, is just 10. So x times absolute value of x is negative 100. Well, Meanwhile, 2 to the negative 10th, we don't know what that is. In fact, we don't need to figure that out. But we know it's going to be a positive fraction. It's going to be 1 over 2 to the 10th. That's a number much smaller than 1, but it is larger than 0. And so, of course, negative 100 is less than 0. 1 over 2 to the 10th is greater than 0. And so that means, again, by transitivity of inequality, that 1 over 2 to the 10th is greater than negative 100. So this statement also, by itself, is sufficient to answer the question. If all the stuff about powers and inequalities and absolute values have your head spinning, I'd highly recommend check out magoosh.com. We have a few hundred videos preparing people for GMAT math. We also have a few hundred videos on the verbal side, including videos that explain absolute value, videos that explain inequalities, and videos that explain exponents. So if it's been a long time since you've dealt with all this and you'd like a video refresher, I highly recommend check out Magoosh. Meanwhile, in this particular question, both statements are sufficient. Answer choice D.